Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This is Dr. Ali Mugabel. Uh, we will discuss orthogonal frequency division multiplexing. We have already covered an introduction to that through multi-channels and multi-carriers. Specifically, now we'll go into orthogonal frequency division multiplexing, OFDM, as one example or one special case of multi-carrier systems. Before we go into the details, let's recall the definition of being orthogonal because we have orthogonal frequency division multiplexing. We have uh, continuous time and we have discrete time. In continuous time, the condition for being orthogonal is that the product of the conjugate of the signal and integration for the duration give you zero. Of course, here we are looking at uh, a set of bases, psi. So for this example of being exponential bases, if you compare a base, a signal with itself, uh, it should be zero if you compare different bases, if m does not equal to n, and it should be t otherwise. So of course, if you compare a signal with itself, you'll not get zero. But if they are orthogonal and the bases are different, you get zero. We can say the same thing for the case of being discrete time signals or discrete uh, basis functions. And in that case, instead of the integration, we need to make sure that the product with the conjugate and then we have some mesh of instead of integration give you zero. That's just general condition for being orthogonal. Orthogonal signals or if we have an orthogonal base set. For the case of orthogonal frequency division multiplexing, we have uh, in each subband or subchannel, we're going to send a signal. Let's say we are going to send a sinusoidal signal, cosine 2 by f k e t. And of course, from different from one band to another, we're going to send different ca carrier frequency, where f sub k represent the medium frequency or the center frequency for the case subchannel. Now we can select this fk in a way to make sure that the carriers are orthogonal. So for example, if the symbol duration symbol rate is t, capital T, then 1 over t would be the symbol rate. Assuming that we are transmitting the same uh, the same rate over all the subchannels, so 1 over t would be the subchannel symbol rate. And we can relate that to delta f, the separation in the frequency so that we, we make sure that the carriers are orthogonal. So to make sure that this is valid, we can make sure that the difference between the two frequencies is equal to one or multiples over t, where t is the symbol duration and t is a multiplier. So if you compare f2 with f1, f3 with f1 and so on, you make sure that always the difference in frequencies has to be um, multiples of the symbol rate, so it's n divided by t. If we guarantee this, then we will get the orthogonal. We will make sure that the uh, the signals are orthogonal, and that's the name orthogonal frequency division multiplexing. So the first condition is that selection of the frequencies is not random, and if we guarantee the frequency, then we guarantee that they are going to be orthogonal even uh, irrespective of the phase shift, independent of the value of the phases. So we don't have to synchronize the phases. OFDM is a special typical is special type or example of multi-carrier modulation in which the subcarriers of the corresponding subchannels are mutually orthogonal. All right, so we can have multi-carriers and we can have special case which is orthogonal multi-carrier. Now, recall what we said about multi-channel uh, or multi-carrier system. We will extend this now to, or we'll, we'll apply that to OFDM. So we can say in short, this is just a recap, in an OFDM system with n subchannels, we're going to divide the bandwidth into n subchannels, and the symbol rate would be 1 over t, where t is a symbol duration. Of course, uh, the symbol rate should be reduced by a factor of n because we'll be sending multiple symbols at the same time. So the symbol rate is reduced by a factor of n relative to the symbol rate on a single carrier system. That employs, of course, the entire bandwidth. And of course, in OFDM, we'll have multiple systems at every band, and everyone will have slower symbol rate. Hence, the symbol rate interval in OFD system is n times TS, where TS is a symbol rate for a single carrier system. Okay, now by selecting n, 
somebody says how many some, how many sub bands should we have we should make sure that n is large enough so that the symbol interval can be made significantly larger than the time duration of the channel or in the frequency domain we have to make sure that the sub band is almost flat in terms of amplitude and linear response linear phase response if you want to say that in time domain we have to make sure that the symbol interval should be made significantly larger than the time duration of the channel time dispersion which means all the echoes will have uh, disappeared thus intersymbol interference can be made arbitrarily small through the selection of n the smaller the value of the bandwidth the larger the value of n the more ideal the response of the channel in other words each sub channel appears to have fixed frequency response okay now these are the advantages of OFDM before we conclude I would just like to highlight some of the disadvantages of OFDM they are sensitive to small carrier frequency offset remember we we have selected the frequency to make sure that they are orthogonal so if there is a small frequency offset they are going to the system will be affected the exhibit high peak to average power ratio remember we said that every channel will be treated differently recall the water filling that we are assigning the power to optimize the overall rate so we'll have some sub band with high power compared to the average and that's a problem when we have high peak to average power ratio would love to have less peak to average power ratio also that uh, OFDM systems are sensitive to high frequency phase noise we also say that the phase will not affect orthogonality but remember that this is in the ideal case because of doubler shift and so on the frequencies will not be orth exactly orthogonal and the phase shift phase noise also would, would affect at high frequency they are sensitive to sampling clock offset because that's and somehow affect the frequency those are the four things that you have to worry about when, when dealing with OFDM sensitive to small carrier frequency offset exhibit high peak to average power ratio sensitive to high frequency phase noise and sensitive to sampling clock offsets some of these problems have already been covered in research and people are trying to reduce their impact now let's look at when do we call the system dense, dense multi-channel system recall for the case of conventional multi-channel systems we try to divide the band into non-overlapping adjacent channels channels are separated by more than their two-sided bandwidth so we we don't have overlap here so that's the one side the other side there's an overlap the entire bandwidth is divided into one over n t where n is the number of channels but with OFDM we can do better than the non-overlapping system and we can have 50 percent overlap of adjacent channels because available bandwidth now can be utilized more efficiently and we have double the advantage channels separated by half of their two-sided bandwidth and we can make sure that they are separable by the fact that they are all orthog that they are being orthogonal so we have dense multi-channel system in the case of OFDM we have conventional or we can have OFDM uh, multi-channel system or dense multi-channel system Now let's look at some examples, some practical examples where uh, OFDM is being used. Uh, recall that OFDM is also known as multi-carrier or multi-tone modulation. Uh, here are some examples based on the European Tele Telecommunications Standard Institute, ETC. ETC. We have the Hyperlan 2, 802.11a, DVB-T, DAB. Let's look, let's look at some of these abbreviations. We have DAB stands for digital audio broadcasting while dvd for digital video desk and we have adsl asynchronous digital subscriber loop uh, and we have our asymmetric digital subscriber loop or line and we have also the wireless local area network these are different standards now those are examples where of them is being practically used uh, I'll, I'll, sh I'll share with you some of the relation between these numbers let's take the first one the hyperland we have transform size we have the number of carriers this is that's n and we have the channel spacing between every channel and the other we have also the the bandwidth 
in megahertz the sample the sample rate we have the symbol duration in microseconds and then we have the data rate so we can relate i have colored these numbers so that you can trace so if we take the entire bandwidth and divide it by the number of the carriers you get the channel spacing for example here we can say that if you take the bandwidth in red here 16.25 and divide by the channel spacing you get 52 or vice versa you divide by 52 you get 13.25 so this is these are related we can also relate the channel spacing with the, the symbol duration remember this is uh, the bandwidth is 1 over t so 1 over 3 32 microseconds give you 13 give you 312.5 kilohertz you can relate other numbers now I'd, I'd ask you in the note section to pick another example let's say at 02.11 or um, let's pick different numbers like the dvbt uh, digital video broadcasting terrestrial and then we uh, i'd like you to to make some relation between the numbers and tell us how how uh, this relation uh, is established so please the, use the comment the the comment section to pick numbers here and relate them so sometimes we have more than one row for the same uh, technology okay now how modulation in if in any of these system is being done suppose that each subcarrier is modulated with m ari qm each subcarrier will be, will be treated as a different system so then the signal on the k subcarrier may be expressed as uh, two components cosine and sine because we are using qam or alternatively we can write that in polar format where we have a complex uh, number x in which which contains real and imaginary part or magnitude and phase so here I'm showing that uh, in blue is the real part, red is uh, is the imaginary part or the cosine and sine, and this is what we really transmit. So we have two representation. I can say also that this vector uh, x is made of this magnitude and that phase. So we can have different way relate the real and imaginary, the polar to the Cartesian format, as we all know from before. The energy per symbol has been uh, absorbed in in the value of x here which is the vector that we transmit. Now, in the received side, when the number of subchannels is large, so, the, 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 so that the subchannel is sufficiently narrow band, each subchannel can be characterized by having a fixed frequency because the entire subchannel is now treated as constant. So instead of saying C sub as function of frequency, it becomes just C which is constant amplitude change and constant phase change. So the received signal now we can multiply by this quantity or reflect that there is a change in amplitude so these are the new things here we have um, this is the new thing here we have uh, the magnitude if you like change and also we have the phase in these two quantities otherwise this is the transmitted uh, signal of course we also add noise to that as usual so this is the received signal in OFDM system the beauty about OFDM is that we have dropped this frequency dependence and we now deal with a constant so the demodulation process of the received signal is uh, goes as as follows the, the demodulation of the received signal in the case subchannel may be accomplished by cross correlating RT with the with the basis functions just like we do in a single carrier system uh, and when we do the correlation these are the basis the cosine and uh, the sine terms and of course and sampling the output cross correlation at, at the end of the duration at t thus we obtain our received vector this received vector of course will be the transmitted one scaled and of course we have the noise the filtered noise now and then we can express this complex number in uh, the signal constellation and find the proper demodulated signal of course we have a complex noise here and it complex additive noise as you can see it has real and imaginary part we can represent that of course as a vector and um, we can represent that as a vector uh, it will not be exactly what we transmit it will be shifted to the right or to the left so so the the demodulation process will continue the scaling of course of the of the signal can be the scaling of the transmit symbol by the channel gain can be removed by dividing by y we can we can do training we can 
assume we have we know the channel state information and we can take care of of the ck by the division of course we get affected noise or changed noise because the noise will be scaled accordingly so if c is small or large we could be emphasizing or de-emphasizing the noise the normalized variable y which is the one that we make a decision on is passed to the detector which computes the, the distance matrix between y and each of the possible points on the constellation diagram and select the signal point representing the smallest possible distance so if we had a vector before the scaling this could be small we adjust with scaling so we get the other vector and then we study the we do the demodulation to the decoder uh, after we adjust for the channel after we equalize the channel 